Hey guys, it's Leah here, and I'm back this week with a brief history on Git, the version control system. So let me tell you right now that the version control system is a programmer's best friend, and it will be there for you when everything goes wrong, as it often does when you least expect it, since coding is a collaborative effort and the human factor is prone to making mistakes, especially after a long night of no sleep and only Red Bull to keep you up. Before version control systems, programmers would share code through email, through a floppy disk even, maybe a USB, and they knew that keeping backups was essential to the development process. A version control systems help programmers keep track of revisions to a code base, and there are three types of version control systems. The first one is local, and each time you make changes to the files, the changes are kept locally as patches, and you can revert to a previous change by adding together all the patches. But of course, this doesn't help you when you're trying to collaborate with someone else. So the second generation version control systems are centralized, where all the revisions are kept on a server, and multiple clients can access these files. But if something were to happen to the central server, then all your revision history would be lost. Now, the third generation is the distributed version control system, which is what Git is. And there's a central server with all the history, but every local collaborator has their own history kept as well. So Git was originally developed by Linus Torvalds in 2005, and the story that led to the development is actually quite juicy. So Linus is the man behind the Linux kernel, and originally all the changes were sent around using patches and archived files. And they did this for a little bit over a decade and finally decided to use BitKeeper, which is a proprietary distributed version control system. And at the time, it allowed open source developers to use the basic version for free, given that they agree with the usage rules. But since BitKeeper is a proprietary software and many of the Linux developers were against the idea of using a proprietary software for contributing to Linux's open source kernel, there was tons of drama involving BitKeeper. But the straw that broke the camel's back was when Andrew Trigel decided to create a client which interoperated with BitKeeper and allowed for the free users to see metadata about the different revision histories. This is a feature that was given to commercial license holders of BitKeeper and BitKeeper was a little bit outraged at the violation of the usage rules, so they decided to revoke every free user's license, among other things. And Linus was clearly upset because he didn't have a working tool, but he also didn't want to go back to the patches, and this spurred him to create Git. At the time, everyone thought that this would detract from Linus's contributions to the Linux development, and of course there was some drama there as well. So if you're interested in the full story, go on Google and type in Linux, BitKeeper, and Git, and you'll get to see some of the original forum posts from the members of the community and their thoughts surrounding the events that happened. Okay, so moving past the drama and getting back to the technical aspects of Git, it has repositories, which are essentially folders that hold your projects, and each repository is located on a server and can be cloned to many different clients, so you can have as many collaborators as you want on a project. Each clone copy also has all the necessary information for you to revert to any past changes with the full history at your disposal. So Git allows files in each repository to be in three different states. It can be unmodified, meaning that the file is the same locally as it is on the server. It can be modified, meaning that your local copy is ahead of the server, or it can be staged, which means your changed copy is ready to be committed to the server so that the server can have the same copy as you do. The four basic commands that you'll usually use on Git are git pull, to grab all the server files in case someone has made a revision change, git add to add the files you've modified, git commit to stage the files, and then git push to send your files to the server. And of course, if there are any conflicts, then you'll be asked to merge the files yourself. When you really start to appreciate git is with its branching models that allow for a unique workflow, but that's a little bit of a more complicated subject, and I'm really hoping to have a seminar on git at U of T. So if you're interested in attending the seminar, please go to opensourcemerch.com and sign up for the newsletter. 
Currently, one of the most popular Git repository web hosts is GitHub, and it offers free accounts as long as your repositories are public. But what people don't know is that students can request an account upgrade for free private repos with their student emails. And you can do that at education.github.com. GitHub also offers GUIs for using Git, wiki pages for the projects, as well as other useful features for developers. And that's it for your intro to Git. So once again, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, requests, whatever you may, they're all super appreciated. Just, you know, leave a comment below. I'm also selling these super awesome Git stickers at opensourcemerch.com. And thanks for watching the video. Bye.